What's up guys, my name is Technopo here for Troubleshoots and today I'm continuing the series on setting up and running a successful Rust server. In my previous video I went through setting up item drop rates, how to change them and make your server a 5x, a 10x or anything you want really. But the next step on top of that is setting up a plugin that lets the stack size change from the default. So as you may or may not know, if you bash a tree and pick up 10 million wood, if you don't have a stack size plugin installed, then unfortunately your inventory will boom, be filled with wood instantaneously, and you won't be able to pick up the rest of it that's lying on the floor in front of you. Slight issue. So how do we go about changing the default stack size or the maximum stack size for Rust? Well, first of all, you'll need a server installed, set up, whether you're using something like game servers or you're hosting it on your own computer. You'll need to be able to transfer files and run console commands using Archon or the console directly. And basically I've run through all of those things and tools that you can use on my other videos in the playlist linked in the description down below. I'm hosting the server off of game servers, so I'm using FileZilla to transfer files back and forth between my computer here on the left and the server on the right hand side. Obviously, if you have it hosted on your computer, you'll simply be dragging and dropping it between folders normally. Then I have this Archon tool over here so I can run console commands on the server remotely. That being said, I'm going to demonstrate exactly what we're going to be doing. So I have admin on the server, I'll simply go ahead open up my inventory, you can see it's completely empty, and I go ahead and spawn myself in some items. So picking something with a relatively low item stack, such as these tools over here, I'll go ahead and give myself, say, I'll just spam it a bunch and see when they stack. So these are currently building into stacks of 10. If I go ahead and check my inventory, you can see 10, 10, 10, 10, and eight. Obviously, if I try and stack it any higher, absolutely nothing will happen. This is also true for collecting from resources, trading with people, etc., etc. It's normal rust mechanics. If you spawn yourself a stack that is bigger than the allowed stack, it'll stack as such, but as soon as you try and drag it, it'll only take the maximum stack size at a time. So let's go ahead and fix this. How exactly do we do that? Well, we're gonna be heading across to the UMod website and downloading a plugin called Stack Size Controller. Of course, there's multiple ones of these. You can pick whichever one you want. However, this is the one that I've been using for a short while and I'll be demonstrating in this video. Simply hit download in the top right and it'll download a .cs file. All we need to do now is open up our folder with our server files inside of it, head into Oxide, followed by plugins, and then we simply just drag and drop it across into our folder. Heading back a folder into config, you'll now see a stack size controller.json file. Of course, if you don't see that, head into your Archon or your console and type in oxide.load space stack capital S size capital S controller capital C. Hit enter and it'll go ahead and load as such. Stack size controller was successfully compiled, generating the config, loaded plugin stack size controller. Awesome. Next, we're going to go ahead and edit the config files over here. Because I have it on game servers, I need to first download it and then I can go ahead and edit it. And once I'm done, I can upload it. So opening it with something like Notepad, you can see exactly what it does over here. So settings, category, default stack, and you can change how big these stack sizes are. Of course, if you leave them at zero, if we head into our game, drag things around, it's set to default. And of course, there's two ways of going about this. The first way is with this over here, where we set defaults for each one and more settings down here. However, this way is a little bit more difficult than running the commands from inside of our game. How exactly do we do that? Well, we need a list of all of the items inside of Rust, as well as their item codes or short names. To do that, there's a bunch of sources linked in the description down below. And the first two resources on Google are Corrosion Hour, the Rust short names, which is over here. So we're gonna be looking for the name of the items and we'll be copying the short name from this row over here. And this one over here on gameitems.io, where the item code is the short name. So we'll simply search for the item we want to stack and we'll go ahead and copy the item code or short name over here. So this item dot timed, right click copy. Of course, I can't say it because of demonetization. However, if we head into our Archon, we can then type a command stack space, the name of the item space, the size of the stack. So I'll enter say 200, enter, and it's now set. Of course, if you want to run this command in game, you need to make sure that you have admin on the server. Then all you'll be doing is inside of chat, you'll put a forward slash followed by a stack space, the short name of the item space, the stack size. So I'll set it to say 300 and there we go. Updated. All we need to do is press our inventory key, drag them around and you can see it's updated as that. We don't even need to go ahead and reload the plugin. So let's change it to a little bit higher. 
like that, set it to 1000, we can now combine all of these into a total stack of 1000. And that's basically it. It's pretty cool. It works really well. And of course, it works with this up here, where if you type something in, you can split out exactly the amount that you want. And of course, if you're going to be running a modded server, this is probably the second most important plugin next to the one that modifies the drop rates from all of the items. So that's basically that. All you need to do is really go through each and every single item. It's a hell of a lot of work, but it really is worth it. So what exactly has changed inside of the JSON file since we last checked? I'm going to go ahead and close it re-download it from my game servers, open it up with Notepad, you'll see that absolutely nothing has changed. Why is this? Well, we actually need to save the settings first. This is probably one of the most important commands for Rust. Basically, we're going to be executing a command, which is a server.write cfg, hit enter, config saved. If we go ahead and download the stack size controller JSON yet again, you can see nothing has changed. Why is this? Well, if we head into our config folder on our server, Go back one, go into data. There's a stack size controller.json file. Downloading that and opening that one up shows us this list over here. And this is basically the complete list of items on the server and their total stack sizes. The one inside of config over here is just a general one that works in groups. However, this one inside of data is the important one. So let's go ahead and change one of these to demonstrate. I'll change the stack size of rockets over here from three to say 953. Save. Now you need to upload it back to your server. Of course, if you're editing it locally, you won't need this step. Then inside of the icon or console, we'll be typing in oxide.reload space stack size controller. Enter and the plugin will reload. Heading back into our game, I'll hit F1 to bring up the spawn menu and spawn myself in some of those items. I gave myself a thousand, so it's stacked into a thousand. However, if I drag it out of here, put it into another slot, you can see it split exactly how I wanted it to, to 953. Of course, if you manually modify the file, the commands inside of the game will still work. And if you change them in the game, I still strongly recommend that you do server.write cfg, even though it might automatically save. Anyways, that's about it. My name has been Tech Number here for Troubleshoot, and this has been another episode in my continued series of creating and running a successful Rust server. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like and check the playlist link down in the description below for more videos that you might find interesting. Ciao!